On today's video, I'm going to show the methodology and the graphs that I use to do optimal charge weight or OCW load testing. This is not a tutorial on how to reload. It is merely a tutorial on how I plot the data, how I collect and plot the data when I'm doing OCW load workup. So let's get started. So the first thing is you're going to need a couple different items. Um, one is you need a chronograph. If you don't have a chronograph, this isn't going to work for you. After the chronograph, um, you're going to need the load data, uh, max load data for the particular bullet, powder, and gun um, that you're trying to do a load workup for. So in today's video, I'm using Stayball 6.5, you know, a um, 6.5 Creedmoor, happens to be a Ruger Precision Rifle, and um, using a 140 grain ELD um, match bullet from Hornet B. So first thing, you have to go look up what is the max load data for that particular bullet powder um, cartridge combination. So if you look on this plot, this comes out of Hornady's book, you'll see that for the Stayball 6.5, we have 43.7 grains as the max um, load. Once we've determined what the max load is, we want to work our way down from there. And I'm choosing two tenths of a grain increments to get ourselves down to a, down to 41.9 grains. So we're going to go from 41.9 grains up to 43.7 grains on this particular load workup. After you have loaded your rounds and try and a couple things to keep in mind use all the same head stamp brass make sure that your head space on the number the pieces of brass you're using are all within a thousandth of each other and that they're within spec so if you can do this either with 10 rounds although your data will improve the more rounds you do so if you're doing 10 step increments, as I show here on this plot, um, you can either do 10 rounds, 20 rounds, 30 rounds, depending on how much data you want to collect on your extreme spread and standard deviation at the same time. You can accomplish this with just one set of 10, but your data will improve both on your shot location and on your ability not to have to do confirmation rounds later with e to determine the ES or the standard deviation. So after you have now loaded your 10 or 20 rounds, in this case we're going to use 20 rounds um, loaded from the 40, sorry, the 41.9 to the 43.7, and we're going to go to the range. Now at the range, we're setting up a special target. That it's actually two targets, and you can see here the one that I used for this particular workup. It has 10 spots on it, corresponding to the 10 different loads we're going to use. And you can see in the upper left corner is my first target. And I'm shooting the lightest load first, working my way up to the heaviest load, constantly looking to see if I'm getting any overpressure signs. In this particular case, I had no overpressure signs. So we shoot shot one with the lightest load, and then we go up two tenths of an increment in this particular case, and we shoot shot two, shot three, shot four, shot five, all the way up to shot 10. And then we reverse, we do shot 11 would be the, still the max load, providing we have no pressure signs on the previous round, and then nine, eight, seven, back forth, and, you, and back all the way down to the lightest load. Now, if you're doing 30 rounds, you would work your way back up again. If you're doing 40 rounds, you'd work your way back down um, to the lightest load again. Now that you've done all that um, shooting, you want to keep your target, and you want to make sure that each time you are shooting at a particular um, space on this target, like in here, this upper one, those are all the lightest loads. And on this lower graph, or on this lower, lower target that you see, this one in the lower right hand corner is all the heaviest load. And all the ones in between constantly stay there. One of the reasons to vary the shots rather than shooting five shots of your lightest load and five shots of the next is your one 
varying how much you let the barrel cool down between shots and you are not getting into a particular groove with one round. You're mixing it up a bit to try and take some of the random variation out of it so that you're getting a more statistically significant um, piece of data. All right, now that we've done all that shooting and we've saved our target and we've collected the velocity of every shot, and that's something I forgot to mention, is as we're shooting, we're recording the velocity of each shot on this table. Now we're gonna go plug that into our spreadsheet and in our spreadsheet, you'll see on this upper part of the spreadsheet, the round, the bullet, the powder that we're using, the 10 different charges that, were, um, that we've used in this particular case. And um, we, you see a little bit of statistics. Now it's a little difficult to get a standard deviation with just two shots. That's why if you do 30 or 40, um, so it's a little difficult to get standard deviation with just two shots per load. Um, but again, uh, you can get a lot of the data to narrow it down to the area you want to focus more on both for grouping and for standard deviation with just 20 shots. I found is an ideal way. You're only wasting 20 rounds and then you might say, all right, I found an area that I want to focus in on and now I might just go sorry, a tenth of a grain up or a tenth of a grain down from that area I'm trying to focus on to see if I've really got the optimum charge weight for that particular rifle, that particular bullet, and that particular powder. So how do we reach, how do we get there? Well, we've recorded all the velocities, and we also are going to record the positions, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's take a look at the velocities first. You'll see, um, you'll see on this chart, we've taken the data from the velocities, and we've plotted them out of our charge weight versus the velocity. And what we're looking for is flat portions, in other words, where we on this graph. In other words, where we've increased the charge, but the velocity changed either little or none at all, sometimes even gets less as we've increased the charge. Those are called nodes or velocity nodes. We want to be in a velocity node. That way, if the powder varies a little bit, the temperature varies a little bit, um, the conditions vary a little bit, we're in an area that's going to be more stable for velocity, and that's going to give us a more consistent point of impact downrange. So that's our first data point. We're looking for nodes. Now, if we've done two or three or four shots uh, instead of just one, we can also take a look and measure the group on each of these targets of these 10 different um, bullseyes that we've shot at and see what the size of our groups are. That helps us out a little bit. You may not want to choose the, the tightest group, however, in this, particular, in this case, because we can improve the group size later on by changing our bullet seating depth. We're not going to go into that on this video. So then, after we've looked at all the velocities, and we can again can plot it two different ways. We can plot it this first way, which is all the shots, and kind of see the spread per shot. We can also plot it statistically. Both can be calculated easy on the spreadsheet. Now, the next thing we need to do is be able to determine the point of impact of all those different rounds. For example, let's say we're in a velocity node, but the point of impact of adjacent loadings are very far apart from each other um, on the target. Well, that's probably not a great place to be either. So that's why we need this other piece of data. So if we plot here um, the position on the target, and if we have five shots, we have to measure the X and Y ordinates um, from bullseye on each of those shots, so that we can combine them all together on one um, virtual target of the average of the number of shots we've taken for each grain weight onto the same plot and see if we're getting the same point of impact at the point that we're also in a velocity node and we're getting a good group. If we have those three pieces of data, then that pretty much zeroes you in on what charge weight you want for that rifle. And now you can tune it even a little bit better by changing the seating depth. I hope this helps. Talk to you later. Bye now.